All right, guys, we're going to cover a lot of ground today. We're going to actually cover three lessons in one, but it's all things that you've done in the past, so they'll be very familiar. It's all about writing equations to fit word problems. We're going to write and solve one-step equations with the following patterns, combining, separating, comparing, elapsed time, and equal groups. Now, the one thing I want you to remember as we're going through this is we almost turn into a language arts class when you're reading these word problems. You need to think what the plot of the story is. Remember, the plot is the action in the story. Is the action in the story about things combining or coming together? Is it about something leaving and there's a separation? So I'm going to refer back to that quite often. What is the plot of the story as we go through these? All right. First of all, we've got combining. And I would like you in your notes to uh, just put this right here, combining sum plus some more equals the total. That's kind of our pattern. That's our skeleton for a combining equation. All right, and then our first problem here. In the morning, the trip odometer in Mr. Chin's care, <laughs> that should be car, that's funny. Car read 53 miles. At the end of the day, the trip odometer read 172 miles. How many miles did Mr. Chin drive that day? Write an equation and solve. So this is gonna be one of those we're gonna use the T like you did it in previous years. And, you know, again, I'm going to look at the plot of the story. I'm going to look at the action. The action of the story is that he had some miles on one day, and then by the end of the day, he had some more miles. So that's definitely things coming together. There were some miles in two parts that are coming together for a total. So we know that um, 53 miles was at the very beginning. Do we know how many miles he drove that day? The sum more. We don't. So you get to choose a letter. And with these, you can choose whatever letter you want. We do know that the total at the end of the day was 172 miles. So that's your equation. And then you would just go ahead and solve it below by subtracting. You subtract. And it looks like 119. So I need to put my letter, and I look for a label here, or maybe here. And actually, you know what, with our two-parter, let me switch that up just a little bit. Let's do our work on the left side, and on the right side, you can write your final answer. And we're not going to worry about checking these. All right? The biggest thing you need to remember over here is you need a letter, and you need a label. All right, now in your notes, underneath where you had the sum plus some more, I want you to do this one. The first scout troop encamped in the ravine. A second troop of 118 scouts joined them, making a total of 293 scouts. How many scouts were in the first troop? Write an equation and solve. Okay, so we're, again, we're going to look. Do you know the sum? You don't know the first one. It just said the first scout troop, but it doesn't how many, tell how many there were. So that's going to be your letter. Plus the second one, the sum more, was 118, and you know the grand total was 293. All right, I would like you to write that in your notebook and then go ahead and solve it and write your answer on the right-hand side with a label. All right, our next pattern then is separating. Separating, you've got to always remember something is going away. All right, it's left the group. So you've got a beginning amount, you've got the sum that leave, and you've got what's remaining. Okay. Tim baked four dozen muffins. He made a platter with some of the muffins and gave them away to the school bake sale. He had 32 muffins left, which he packed in the freezer bags to store in the freezer. How many did he give away? Now, we know at the beginning that he had four dozen, and we're going to go ahead and change that to 48, because 12 times a dozen is 12, 12 times 4 is 48. We don't know how many he gave away. We just know that he had 32 remaining at the end. And of course we would solve this by subtracting. 48 minus 32, you would solve it and then you would put G equals over here you need your number and muffins. Okay, I'm not going to worry about solving this guys right now because you know how to do that part. We're just really, this is what I'm keying in on today. Alright, let's take a look at this one then. Um, make sure by the way that you get this in your notes. 
I almost forgot that. So get this in your notes, please, the separating pattern. All right. The room was full of boxes when Sharon began, and then she shipped out 124 boxes. Only 74 boxes were left. How many boxes were in the room when she began? Well, again, we don't know how many were at the beginning amount, so that's your letter. We know that how many boxes left, how many were separated out? Well, that would be 124. And we know that there were 74 left at the end. All right, I would like you to solve this on the left-hand side and then write your answer on the right-hand side. And when you get to your answer, ask yourself that question. Does my answer make sense? Does this make sense that that's how many boxes Sharon had at the very beginning of the story? All right, now let's go to problems that are about comparing things. Okay, so here, this should go in your notes. Comparing is larger of something minus the smaller of something else equals the difference. And I always say comparing problems are apples to oranges. You are comparing two different things. It's not one group and part of them leaves. That's a separating pattern. This is comparing two different things. Let's look at an example of that. During the day, 1,119 employees work at the ball bearing factory. At night, 534 employees work there. How many more employees work at the factory during the day than at night? Well, here you're talking about daytime workers and nighttime workers. That's the two things you're comparing. And according to our pattern, we want the larger one first. So we want 1,119 minus the smaller group. And they want to know how many more. So that's your letter. And you would solve it by subtracting, and then your answer would be D equals whatever the number is. And your label, don't forget your labels, would be employees. All right. Now let's look at this. We're just comparing numbers here. The number 740,000 is how much less than 1 million? This is the example I would like you to put in your notes. Okay? So again, this is the example I want in your notes. 1 million. Lots of zeros. Minus 740,000. You're comparing two different numbers. So this is a comparing equation. Now, are you going to have a uh, label on your answer? No, because this is just talking about numbers. So your answer will just be D equals and whatever you get when you subtract. All right, another subtraction pattern question has to do with time. And it's elapsed time. time. Elapsed time is the time of length between two points in time. Okay, so for example, if we have the date 1910 and 2010, this space in here, all of these years, is the elapsed time, however many years from each. And of course, that would be 100 years. All right, here's one elapsed time problem. How many years were there from 1492 to 1776? With the lapse time, you're always going to have the later date. So whatever the later time period is, or the finishing time, minus the earlier equals the difference. Okay? Go ahead and put that in your notes. Later minus earlier equals the difference. All right? Well, here, between 1492 and 1776, the later date would be 1776. Minus the earlier date is 1492, and we don't know what the difference is, so we put a letter there. Then you would solve it. All right. Here's an elapsed time problem that I would like you to put in your notes. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was 34 years old in 1963 when he delivered his I Have a Dream speech. In what year was he born? Well, guys, first of all, let's figure out which was the later date, 1963 or when he was born? Well, can't give a speech if he wasn't born. So 1963 is what you should write in your notes. Minus the year he was born, which we don't know, and that equals a total of 34 years. Now you can solve this one in your notes. 
Now I have one more pattern and then we're done. And that is anything that talks about equal groups. Equal groups is going to be multiplication. So I want you to go ahead and put this in your notes. Equal groups, the number of groups times the number of each group equals the total. And we're really going to look for that total when we're doing these problems. All right, let's look at just a couple of examples here. Juanita packed the same amount of marbles in each box. Ooh, there we go, in each box. See equal, equal groups? She packed a total of 512 marbles. If she filled 32 boxes, how many marbles did she pack in each box? Now, here's the key. I think this is the easiest way to do an equal groups problem. Did they give you the total? Well, right here it is. That always goes at the end then the other number they give you is going to be one of the factors and guys I really don't care which factor it becomes okay the, the order of the factors doesn't matter as long as you have the total in the right spot and then you would divide to solve it and we would do 512 divided by 32 I'm not going to work that out right now I'm not worried about that and we would label that marbles alright let's try another one Movie tickets were $8 each. Guys, 90% of these equal groups problems are going to have the word each or the word per, like per hour or per item or something like that in it, okay? 112 tickets were sold. How much was the total cost of all the tickets? Well, this time we don't know the total, but we do know that we have 100 tickets, or excuse me, 112 tickets, and they cost $8 each. And you would solve that, and your label, of course, then would be with the dollar sign because you're talking about money. All right, last one in your notes then. This one goes in your notes. 600 new cars were delivered to the dealer by 40 trucks. If each truck carried the same amount number of cars, how many cars were delivered by each truck? Well, again, let's look for the grand total. Did they give us the grand total? Yes, they did. The grand total of cars was 600. Then we know that the 40 is one of the factors, and we know that um, we don't know the other one. And you would solve this. So I want you to solve this and write your answer with the label. Phew, then we're done with this one. So make sure you get all of those patterns and those example problems and bring them to class tomorrow.